All right, guys, welcome back or welcome to the garage. It's Tush coming at you. We are just about to embark on a, I'm going to call it a longer term project. So this project I expect will probably take three to four weeks to complete. And it's not working on any of the cars. It's actually doing a garage organization uh, project. And I've been mentioning in some of my previous videos that I've always wanted to get rid of this mezzanine that's in the garage with these bins and other bits stacked up on top as it really kind of encroaches on the depth of the garage. So I'm trying to move things back a little bit more to the uh, back garage wall to gain a little space. While at the same time, I'm planning on doing a lot more uh, structured organization, let's say, getting in some, uh, some proper garage cabinets moving my bench to a better location, moving the sandblaster that's behind the bench out of here and into a different location, relocating all of the parts bins basically and uh, everything up on the shelf down into the basement or into the, my shed outside. So really it's quite a bit of organization work just to get to clearing this whole area out before we start uh, building it back up and making it look a lot better. So I just thought I would give you a quick before shot on what we're working with. The workbench is a disaster at the moment. I've already started moving uh, things off of shelves and uh, I've got them just in bins here. We've still got a lot of stuff over here underneath the mezzanine on these useless shelves back here that I have to move stuff in order to get to. So that little compressor, for example, is in the way. We're going to be upgrading some of our shop equipment as well. The little compressor is going to go, we're going to go back to a, uh, a larger compressor, probably a 60 gallon compressor versus the, I think that's a 25 or 30 gallon. We've also improved uh, some of our other equipment, like our welding equipment. There is my old Lincoln uh, 140 welder. Well, I've got a couple of other welders over here that we've upgraded to, and we'll share that with you a little bit later when we do the garage unveil. All right, let's take a little bit of a walkthrough on what we've got currently as far as the situation is concerned. So, got some old uh, garage cabinets over here, which are repurposed kitchen cabinets that somebody was throwing out. So, the intent here is to probably leave most of these cabinets. I'm thinking of moving the end cabinet and getting a taller cabinet here for all of my paint supplies and sanding supplies. And uh, making a kind of, kind of a hazardous material cabinet, let's call it, for all my thinners paints, etc. Then over here we've got another open cabinet which I've just basically got all of my power tools, uh, my electric tools, my air tools sort of piled onto. We're gonna have to organize that a lot better. Unfortunately the, um, the vacuum is out here for the uh, in-house central vac and that really cannot move and there's also some piping that actually sort of encringes on this back wall a little bit as well as it runs all the way along and all the way up as well. This is my bedroom above my garage, so that's an outlet in the bedroom. But anyway, I'm probably gonna have to do some sort of standoff from the rear wall to get around the ABS piping, either that or reroute the piping. I don't think I can get around it entirely, so I was thinking in doing some uh, strapping off the wall to be able to do some paneling and make that wall flush. But again, that's something that I've been sort of thinking of, whether I wanna just paint the wall and work around the piping or build a false wall to sort of trap the piping inside and have a nice flat flush surface to work with. So we're working on that idea. This is just a really quick structure I built just to get some shelving units in here around my old workbench. So that's gonna, gonna, gonna go. I've never really been happy with that. It's been functional, but again, it's, uh, it's not great. Fridge is gonna stay, we just gonna have to relocate that. I'm not sure whether this workbench is gonna stay. I think we may uh, purpose the actual rolling toolbox with the worktop on it as my actual bench. We'll see if I have enough space. I have some general guidelines and plans written out and I don't think I'll be able to fit that bench in once I get everything in here that I want to. I may regret that, but we will have this surface to work on and maybe attach a vise to. I am uh, also, I've got a couple of pop-up workbenches and work tables that I tend to use. Uh, when when needed, so uh, I don't know if I'll miss that bench. Like I said, I might, I may not discard the bench. I may just move that down to the basement. Been threatening to set up a little uh, basement workshop anyway, so that might be a good repurpose for that piece of equipment. As far as the mezzanine is concerned, like I said, it's basically storage bins with parts uh, for cars. Some of it's for painting stuff over there, which I hope to move into a cabinet. But again, most of this stuff I want to try to move down into the basement, and I've got a sort of a structure 
uh, of how I want things ar arranged in the basement of you know current projects that I'm working on versus old projects that I've completed that I've got parts stockpiled for. So we've got an idea for that. That's probably going to entail uh, me enlisting some help from some uh, local kids. Uh, I'm going to probably, instead of doing the lifting parts, I'm going to hire some teenagers to help me move this stuff down to the basement. I think that'll be money well invested versus me trying to carry bins down flights of stairs uh, with my bad shoulders. So that's going to have a little bit of money thrown at it, I think. Uh, at the same time, I've got a, a wooden shed outside, a garden shed that's got some storage bins of parts in it as well. And I've also got a, a temporary tent out there that has uh, quite a bit of uh, more parts and equipment in there as well that I don't use frequently. So all that stuff's going to get moved into the basement. So the basement's going to be jumbled up a bit more, but I think I can structure it a little bit better. Parts will be out of the way uh, and I'll be able to, like I said, get rid of this mezzanine, which is the most important thing to me. My toolbox will be staying uh, as part of the back wall. I'm thinking the compressor will probably go in the corner. Uh, again, we're going to have some professional um, cabinets here and uh, probably some upper and lower cabinets, but we'll wait and see how we do as far as that's concerned. That'll be in this area over here. And then we'll have some sort of standing cabinetry and then some equipment over on this side of the garage flat against the wall. So there you go. There is the current status. Lots of, uh, lots of battery power tools that we need to find uh, locations for. I don't know what I'm gonna do with things like the uh, hard to store stuff like the uh, shop vac, for example. I'm thinking of doing some hanging shelving above uh, my cabinets that I'm gonna get, because there's gonna be some dead space above the cabinet. So I'm thinking of doing some, either a wood shelf up there, uh, some sort of hanging shelf from the ceiling using the studs or maybe a Unistrut uh, style shelf, which will be kind of more in keeping with the style that I'm looking for. But we haven't decided entirely what we're gonna do with that yet. So uh, that's gonna entail that the uh, TR250 here under this cover is gonna go away for a few weeks before it comes back to the garage. It's probably a good time to do it at the moment. I'm kind of in between projects. I do have the Alfa Romeo Spider coming back if you watched my channel previously. So that'll be coming back in the near future. It is still, uh, Sorry, I'm going to call it early spring, mid-February. It's not really spring yet, but coming up towards spring and the temperatures are starting to warm up. So it's probably a good opportunity to get this project done and out of the way before we start getting back into working on the cars 100%, especially getting them ready for the, uh, dri the driving season. There's always lots of little jobs to do. All right, I think that's it for the uh, initial overview of my current garage situation. And stay tuned, we'll bring you along the way as we do some updates and start clearing this stuff out and uh, making this uh, back wall in the garage in general look a little bit better. Hopefully that'll also include some paint as well. I'm not really fond of this uh, pink paint that's been in the house since I've purchased it. So there'll be a lot of cleaning involved in order to get this place cleaned up and painted. But uh, I think I'm up for the task. I'm tired of the pink paint. So let's do something a little bit different. All right, guys, that's it for now. We will see you on the next update, whenever that is. All right, we're back for another installment of the uh, garage makeover. And as you can see, the garage is kind of filling up with some equipment that I've purchased. And we'll go into more detail on that later. I have moved my uh, 1968 Triumph TR250 into storage temporarily for at least the next couple of weeks in order to clear the back wall out and start emptying that mezzanine. I do have a couple of uh, guys coming to give me a hand on the weekend, on Saturday and Sunday, to help sort of uh, empty the contents of the top of the mezzanine and move those parts bins down to the basement. And I've got some back behind here. I actually have a uh, shed outside as well, a wooden shed with some parts bins that will empty and maybe I can move my sandblaster that's under cover here Maybe we can move that into the wooden shed outside and get that out of the way. So in the meantime, I've just been kind of working away at sort of disassembling this corner over here. We're going to take these shelves off the wall and uh, get those down and maybe move a few things further away from this side of the garage back towards this side, although I'm running out of room quickly. So anyway, we'll uh, do that before we start tackling that side of the garage and uh, moving the workbench out destroying that old shelving unit and uh, doing some deconstruction over there. I just wanted to give you a quick update on what's going on in the Taj Mahal. All right, guys, it's another day. It's a cold one outside, about minus 15 degrees Celsius. So 
got the little electric fan just humming away out here in the garage, making it a little bit comfortable at least. So we did manage to make a little bit of progress under the mezzanine here. And I finally got to remove those shelves that I've been wanting to remove for a longest period of time. So the boards are there. We might reutilize those in some way, shape or form in the next uh, rendition of this garage space. But anyway, they're just sitting there for now. Bracketry is all over there with the screws uh, if required uh, for future use. We did uh, vacuum up a little bit in the corner here. We started to clean the walls up a little bit, but obviously we're gonna do a lot more in-depth cleaning on these walls, probably with some TSP, which I have over there. You can see it there. PTS is the French of TSP. Anyway, uh, we'll probably do some wash washing of the walls prior to uh, putting some fresh paint on these and get rid of this pink out here. Um, but that's for a later date. We're gonna continue on moving the rest of the stuff here off the top of the mezzanine so we can then start to tear this down. I'm running out of space to put stuff. So I'll have to be a little bit creative because the garage is getting pretty full on this side, as you can see. And over here, we still have one car in here. So it's getting pretty tight over here as well. So we'll make some space somehow and start piling stuff on top of stuff. Uh, until we can get some of these bins out and relocated. That's gonna happen tomorrow. And we've got some guys coming over to help me do that tomorrow now, since today is a little colder than we anticipated. Tomorrow's supposed to warm up a little bit. So that's the plan for today. I get the rest of the stuff off the mezzanine, detach the air reel, get that out of the way. Had a little bit of a catastrophe yesterday when taking these shelves down. The uh, cable uh, was actually stapled to the shelves and it ended up uh, cutting uh, the cable to my internet and to my television so i've had to sort of splice a new cable in there temporarily just to make it through the uh the evening yesterday so we'll do a little bit more permanent repair again once this mezzanine comes down we'll do some uh, reconstructing of uh, the wiring and the routing etc that hole there where the wiring goes through is my basement behind it so I uh, should be able to pull a new cable from a junction box on the inside of the basement and that'll make it a le little bit easier. I won't have to do this huge splice. So anyway, that's it for now. We'll continue on moving some stuff out of the way. And again, cleaning the stuff on the top of the mezzanine. And then maybe we'll get into some destruction mode later on today. All right, the mezzanine is pretty much all the way down. Still need to move it outside and remove the outer structure, the legs. And you just have it sitting here and you know, drag that outside. Hopefully maybe remove some nails before I go ahead and do that. We've already moved the piece of plywood outside. So it'd be uh, nice to have an extra set of hands, but I was able to get it down without uh, doing too much damage to myself or the wall. It still looks pretty good. Obviously needs a lot of cleanup and a lot of painting, but uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna clean this area up down here as well. And I'm going to lost my internet cable connection. <laughs> so I've got to fix that again. So I've got to do a more permanent solution to that. So yeah, so the next thing we'll do is, like I said, drag this structure outside. And then we'll go after these leg pieces. I actually might even leave the bottom legs up and uh, maybe put that sheet of plywood back here as a backer board against the wall to protect against my central vac piping. That'll keep the uh, equipment from actually trying to get back against the wall too far. So I'm gonna think about that. Maybe I'll drag the plywood back in and put it here as a false wall to uh, save this pipe. But obviously we'd have to do a cutout around my outlet. So we'll figure something out. All right, another quick update before we take a break. Uh, I managed to take that uh, top platform section apart and uh, got it into pieces, man more manageable pieces for me at least. So that was fun. And then uh, did a little damage, unfortunately, getting this top header bar off and uh, damaged the drywall. But I've got an idea for what I'm gonna do there. And this was a little bit difficult to get off as well. So I've got a little bit of damage there. So definitely gonna need some repairs. I'm gonna leave that post there temporarily. Like I said, maybe we'll put a piece of paneling across there or four by eight sheet of plywood, we'll see. But uh, that'll stay there temporarily at least. So. I think what we'll do now is we'll pound some nails out uh, and get these outside and stored away out of the way. And then if we need them for future construction, we can use them then. So making progress, I think it's time for a bit of a break though. All right, another quick update for you. So we've just been clearing stuff out of this area. I took all the nails out of all the boards 
and move those outside and store them safely. So we've got a little bit of room here to work with. So what I'm gonna do now, uh, you can see that I moved the fridge over here temporarily. Now we're gonna go after the workbench and just move it over into this area so I can get that monstrosity of a shelving unit down. So gotta basically remove everything from under the bench and anything over the bench. So that'll be quite the chore to find places to put the stuff temporarily. But once we move the bench over, we can fill the bench up again temporarily. Uh, until we actually locate it where we're actually going to keep it. This bench may not survive this uh, renovation. I don't know if I'm going to have the room for it. So we'll have to see if I can repurpose this or whether it's going to stay in the garage. I'd kind of like to keep it if possible, but it might be in the way based on the floor plan or the plan that I've got for the garage. So we will see if it'll fit in the end plans or not. All right, end of day update. We've spent the entire day out here basically demoing the uh, back wall so we managed to get that shelf off uh, over there we left the mounting blocks that are attached to the studs currently just in case we might need them for something we haven't quite figured that out yet so I figured I'd just leave them until I'm sure I need to remove them but other than that it's looking pretty good so got some firewood for tonight I must have pulled out probably a couple hundred nails we've got all the extra wood put away in the backyard and uh, like I said we'll use that if required for any of the future projects that we're going to build in this garage but for now I'm happy uh, that this is completely uh, done uh, it's been a number of years as I mentioned that I wanted to get this done so it's nice to actually see it opened up so the next step I think is gonna, probably going to be to uh, start cleaning the walls I'm thinking about the possibility of relocating the uh, central vac um, over to the wall where my tools are and uh, maybe making a new home for those somewhere. Maybe put the the uh, motor for the, the vacuum on that wall where the tools are and that will give me a little bit more space on this wall. So I haven't quite figured out if I'm going to do that yet. Obviously they require some replumbing for the vacuum but we'll get there when we get there. All this scrap metal needs to be sorted, needs to go somewhere else. So and anyway, we've got to find homes for a bunch of stuff. It's a bit of a disaster, that's for sure, but we'll get there eventually and get it sorted. So, like I said, I think the next thing to do is to start uh, maybe working on getting the walls uh, painted, cleaned up and painted, so that I can start situating some of the uh, items where they need to go, like the cabinets and like my rolling toolboxes, etc. Compressor needs to go over in the corner, but we need to do some repair there as well. So, like I said, first things first, let's get the walls cleaned get this painted and then we can start uh, locating some equipment and making a little bit more room here in the uh, center of the garage. We've got some bins going away tomorrow I believe so that should clear the garage out a little bit and give us a bit more room to work out here. So looking forward to that. We'll see you tomorrow. All right it's another day out in the garage and I'm not sure whether you'll be able to tell or not but it's definitely a lot less cluttered out here let's say. I had a lot of bins here at the rear of this car and underneath this car and some bins over in this space. Missing a smaller compressor here that uh, found its new home today. And I had a bunch of other storage bins around in this area here and over here. Those are now being relocated to the basement. So we've got a bit more space to work with out here. So I think the plan today will be to try to just move some of these items where they kind of need to be against the wall space or the planned area where they need to be at least just to see if things fit like I anticipate. So that will entail me moving a few things to be able to do that, but uh, we're up for it. It definitely looks darker out here with uh, no light in this uh, rear part of the garage. I've got no light basically from this bulkhead back and that's gonna change, that's part of the plan. I've already got some lights basically to fit back here. But it definitely looks dark once you pass this bulkhead. Anyway, let's get to, let's get to busy, busy and uh, we'll move some stuff out off the wall space. And uh, like I said, we'll just get things situated where they need to be. Of course, the walls need to be fixed in some areas like over there. And of course, these walls need to be washed down and painted. But anyway, that will be at a later time and probably in a few days time. We just wanna get stuff sort of positioned where it needs to be. Not planning on putting anything in the cabinets but because uh, we want to be able to move them out from the wall, but we want to kind of locate them where they're going to be. All right, we're making pretty good progress out here. And uh, as mentioned, we were going to try to arrange things 
to see if they would fit on the wall as planned. And the plan changed slightly, to be honest with you, because of the central vac piping that really can't be moved. That's my bedroom above, and that pipe goes up to the central vac up there. Uh, I Technically, I guess I could move it up, but that's not going to really help either because there are plans for some shelving above the cabinets as well. So I did manage to get everything in that I wanted to. Compressor in the corner, I'll probably angle that a little bit and uh, have enough uh, area down the bottom here for hose and filtration. So uh, nothing is leveled yet. Uh, most of the cabinets are pointing forward a little bit, so it's a good thing they have adjustable feet. The toolbox kept self-opening, so I just jammed a piece of uh, angle under there to keep it a little bit more upright. So uh, like I said, everything needs to be leveled. Now this area over here where I threatened to move the central vac, well, it's actually turned out pretty well because I was able to fit my fridge down here and a few other things here in the corner, like an old axle for one of my TR3s. And I'm able to still get the bottom uh, of the vacuum off to, to be able to change it or change the filter and remove the debris from there. So what we'll do is we'll probably keep this arrangement and we'll clean up this shelf a little bit and probably repurpose that in some way, shape or form and get those tools organized a bit better. Again, as mentioned, they're going to be shelving uh, going across the top here. I've got two six foot sections of shelving in black, which are going to go across here. Now, it's going to be a bit of a game of inches when it comes to these upper cabinets. So the uppers are intended to sort of fit within this space here. This is a 52 inch rolling toolbox. Unfortunately, the cabinets are a little bit wider than that, so they'll have to sort of extend outside of that 52. I think they're like 54 inches, basically. So the problem with that is I've got six-foot shelves, and I was hoping to come from this corner across and butt up with this edge of this cabinet. But it's literally probably an inch or two away from that working. So it may need to shift everything to the right a little bit, but then that puts that piping into play. So... We're going to have to play a little bit and see what we can do as far as the upper cabinets and the shelving is concerned, but we'll get there when we get there. Um, so I think that's about it. The bench, I think I'm going to leave there, and uh, we'll probably do something above it, like probably a maybe a power station for all the batteries and tools. Maybe we'll do a little uh, tool station as well for all my drills and drivers, but we'll see. Again, that's to be, I don't have anything really planned for that wall, but that's what I was thinking of. And I'm happy that I'm probably able to retain this table here in the corner, although that needs to be cleaned up and repainted. So we'll do that. Lots of stuff over here still to deal with. And obviously I've got one more cabinet. And as mentioned, the plan for that cabinet is to remove this upper over here, probably move that shelf down to the basement and uh, stick everything that's on that shelf. That's mostly bodywork stuff and paint stuff over there. And it looks like waxes and cleaners. So a lot of that stuff will probably go into some of these cabinets and some will probably go into this cabinet. So that will be for another day though. I'm running out of steam and we got other things to do today. Uh, one other thing, so the plan, I do a lot of painting out here. If you don't follow this channel, I do quite a bit of automotive painting out here. And the thought now is that we are going to try to keep some overspray off of these cabinets. I haven't been doing a very good job of that in the past. And you can see from the state of my Craftsman stainless steel box over here, how much overspray it has on it from multiple restorations. I've done probably four car restorations in this garage and a few bikes out here where I've painted. So that's a little worse to wear. We're going to try to polish that up and clean that up. But in the future, the plan now is to utilize the banding, so the strapping here on the edge of this ductwork. And uh, what we'll probably do is you see I stuck a magnet up there. I'm planning on actually doing like a poly sheeting all the way across here, all the way across this beam. It gets a little dark over there and uh, hanging some sheeting to keep overspray from coming to this side of the garage. Usually when I paint, I exhaust out the front of the garage with a few fans underneath the garage. So that should probably work and keep some of the overspray from this side of the garage. The plan is also to uh, put some lights up back in this area to make this area a lot brighter. I've got those in stock inside the house. They are very similar to these lights here. So we'll go ahead and we'll utilize those in this space back up here to lighten this area up. I do have one light that's probably gonna go over one of my benches, probably over this bench once we get those upper cabinets hung. We'll probably light the workbench area up here at least. And then we'll probably have to figure out something out for this side as well. Plan is also to get rid of these regular fluorescent tubes and go to some LEDs probably. You can see how dull that one is over there. I'm not sure if that's coming out in the camera or not, but 
these have uh, seen better days and uh, the LEDs are definitely the way to go. So same thing with the, the uh, lights over here. I've got some strip lighting on the walls under the cabinets. That's gonna go and be updated as well. So pretty much uh, most of the lights except the current LEDs I have over at the front side of the garage will stay and most of the other ones I think will probably go over a period of time. Again, this is, you know, upgradable. It doesn't have to be all in one shot. It can be done over a period of time as finances and as my workload allows, but uh, we'll try to get it done as much as possible so we don't let it languish for another 15 to 20 years before we decide to do something about it. All right, that's it for now as far as the update's concerned. I think we're getting pretty much ready for paint, which means I'll just have to, none of the cabinets are full, obviously, so they'll just be basically pulled out walls fixed and repaired behind and painted probably in stages and then we'll push the uh, cabinetry back where it's going to live level it off and then we can actually start filling it up with uh, some of the stuff that we need to get off the garage floor from back in this area all right that's it for now that's the update we'll bring you back uh the next problem will probably be probably cleaning and painting walls how exciting all right, guys, another day out in the garage, and uh, we're slowly making our way to the paint stage. And we did actually go to our local uh, Home Depot and picked up our paint and some spackling compound or drywall compound and some patching material to do some of the, the patches that we need to do. So 300 bucks on paint and materials to do this wall and the two side walls. I've decided on the rear wall we're gonna do a dark gray, and on the side walls, we're gonna do a lighter gray. So we are just about to start the process of moving everything that I moved against the wall back out uh, from the wall so I can start the process of washing the walls. And we bought some TSP for that. So over here in the white jug is some TSP spray bottle, and then we're going to uh, wipe that down with a mop, basically a uh, fiber pad mop and see how much dirt we can get off that wall. I think before we get to that point though, we're gonna break out the leaf blower and we're gonna to try to blow some of these cobwebs and dust from up in the corners to make it a little bit easier to clean with the mop. So that will be the first step before we uh, hit it with the TSP. But obviously we gotta move the furniture away from the, or the furniture, the cabinetry away from the walls before we get to that point. So we're gonna do that now. I've tried to make a little bit of room back here so I can move some like things benches out of the way and maybe move the compressor back a little enough. I just need to basically have a, a few feet behind all this stuff so I can work back here. So we're gonna move all this forward. And by the way, so some of my pack raddedness is coming into play. I've uh, rescued this pegboard many years ago, probably three or four years ago, and I've had it in storage for a while. This used to be, a, I guess, a fixture for Milwaukee Tools in one of the stores, and they were throwing it out, so I grabbed it. So I've got a couple of pegboard sections and a couple of other interesting things, like some racking to go with it. Actually, this one, I believe, displayed some coats. So it actually came with a coat hanger and uh, some stainless, really nice stainless steel hangers. I think it was uh, trying to sell their heated vests. But anyway, regardless of that, I have some stuff that I'm going to be able to utilize in this build. So I'm happy to be able to put that to use. So I played around with it a little bit. I think this piece of pegboard will probably go over here above my bench here fairly high with some shelves up on top of it. Some of the uh, pegboard shelves, which are fairly light duty, but we'll just put some light stuff up there. So we'll put that pegboard here and then we're going to have another pegboard section just in the middle here below my upper cabinets and possibly my TV in there, we'll see. But anyway, that's the plan for the pegboard. Um, I've always wanted some pegboard in the garage just to get some of the stuff that I utilize the most, like my ratcheting end wrenches, uh, would like to be able to get to those easily. So I'd like to get those up on a pegboard. Anyway, we're rambling a little bit. So we'll get to work moving these cabinets out and we'll start to clean the walls in order to get them ready for paint. All right, just a quick update. We've managed to uh, clean most of the back wall. We've got some of this little corner over here to do and down below the vacuum. And we've made some repairs, uh, but ran out of material. So got a couple more holes up there to fill, three of them. And we've got a big hole over there to fill and another little hole below it to fill. So I've got to get some more materials tomorrow to be able to do that. And uh, obviously we need to do a little sanding on this uh, compound here that's uh, pink currently, but will dry to solid white 
once it's dry. I think we're gonna have to put the heater on out here overnight. It is gonna be dropping down fairly cool out here. It's about 11 degrees Celsius right now, but I'm expecting it to go down below zero overnight. So we will pop the heater on. Maybe we'll do a little bit of cleaning and we'll get all this paper towel out of here just to be on the safe side and uh, clean this place up, get ready for tomorrow. And like I said, make a run to the uh, store and get some more material and get this finished off as far as being cleaned and patched. And then we'll be one step closer to getting paint on the walls. All right, uh, patched a few more holes on this wall over here and just waiting for those to dry. So I think we're gonna go after uh, painting this wall. Still have a little area here in pink, which is not completely dry, but we'll kind of work around that the best we can. I wanna get this wall painted at least so I can start doing the hanging cabinets in this area and possibly the hanging shelf before we start putting stuff back against this wall. So I think what the plan will be is to paint up until the halfway mark, which is this uh, vertical length of PVC pipe from my central vac. So we've got the wall uh, washed down uh, with the uh, TSP and then just with water. And I think it's looking good enough and clean enough to paint now. So we're gonna break the paint out and uh, got my larger ladder out so we can get to the uh, top a little bit easier. We'll start by edging it out with a brush and then we'll hit it with the roller. So again, this wall is intended to be sort of a dark gray. So we'll see how I did as far as the paint color is concerned. I'm not sure whether I'm gonna need one or two coats. We are going over a light color. So I'm hoping that it might cover with one coat, but we'll go back and do two if required. All right, it's a little dark, but um, there is the first coat of the, uh, the darker gray on the back wall here. And that uh, looks pretty good. There's obviously a few spots that, this is a garage, remember, it's not gonna be uh, perfect. And this actually area is gonna be covered by a piece of pegboard, so you won't even see it. So yeah, it's uh, looking pretty good. I'm happy with the color. Uh, obviously still need to do that corner over there, but I wanted to get this area done so I can get those upper cabinets mounted. So we're gonna work on getting done, uh, getting that done now. So uh, these cabinets uh, come with a template. So here are the cabinets that I'm using, these uh, Mastercraft uh, Diamond Series, they're called. Uh, there's the cabinets that I'm using, 400 pound capacity. So they have these uh, brackets, uh, where are they here, that you basically stick on the wall and then the cabinets sort of sit down on top of the brackets in a slot or two slots. So we're gonna endeavor to use the template that comes with the kit to get those brackets mounted where we need them. And uh, we'll mount the cabinets side by side and uh, see how we do. All right, it's a uh, Sunday afternoon after work and we figured we'd come out and do a bit more work on the garage. I think the last bit of video I took was about putting the upper cabinets up. And as you can see, I've managed to do that and a little bit more. So we talked about installing pegboard. So I've gone ahead and installed that pegboard below the cabinets and we've put our uh, bench in place or our rolling toolbox or tool chest, whatever you want to call it. I did end up shortening the pegboard a little bit by that much basically. So I had to do a little customization on the metal framework to get that to fit. So that's done. And then we've just got a cabinet pushed into place where that's going to be. Haven't filled it up yet. Uh, with anything because I'll probably have to do a few more things. I was thinking about installing the TV above the cabinet, which we have here on the ground. So I had a couple different options in mind. We were thinking about installing the cabinet here on the pegboard as high as we could go. That, that takes a lot of the pegboard space away. So I think it might be better up on the wall. So we've purchased a wall mount for the TV. So that's got to go up. We did install one of these Vivor uh, shelves. It was actually a six foot unit that we've trimmed down into a three foot unit. So it's hinged in the middle. So I had to grind the welds off the hinges to make it a three foot section. So I've got a three foot section there and I've got a six foot section to go over there, which I think will fit over there. If it won't fit, we'll just do the three foot section over there as well. And then we'll repurpose the other couple three feet sections somewhere else, maybe in the garage, we'll see. Anyway, we're out here today to start working on this side of the garage. First thing I need to do is to sand down that drywall compound and make that a little bit smoother before we continue our paint job into the corner. 
We're gonna take that cabinet down. I've got an empty bin out here. Um, we're gonna fill that bin with those tools just to get them out of the way so I can get that shelf taken down. Looks like I need a drywall repair in the corner behind that cabinet. As you can see, there's quite a big hole there. So I've got a few more patches to do in that area before we start painting the sides of the garage. I'm not sure if I mentioned or not, but we have a light gray, a very light gray for the sides of the garage, which will obviously contrast against the dark of the back wall. So hopefully that'll work out okay. I did do some cleaning on this wall already, um, so it shouldn't be too bad. I do need to actually clean the bulkhead up here, and I think we're gonna go ahead and paint that the dark gray as well. So that blends into the back wall a little bit. I was trying, I'm you know, on the fence about what color to paint that, whether that should be light gray or dark gray. I think we'll go with the dark gray on that. Anyway, so first things first, we're gonna uh, break out a sander, sand those patches down. And then we'll take the cabinet down, like I mentioned, and we'll paint this rear wall. Maybe get one of these other cabinets uh, just out of the way and in place against the wall. We're not going to fill them with anything yet, just in case we need to move them. But of course, before I move that cabinet, I probably want to concentrate on getting the shelf up because the cabinet will be in the way. So first things first, let's get the wall prepped and painted. All right, uh, back wall is now painted. Not great but it's painted. I hate painting. I think I mentioned that already. So one of the last things I did was touch the ceiling over there with a little bit of gray just to, you know, screw things up a little bit right at the end. But uh, yeah, so I fixed that uh, big hole in the wall over there. So we'll uh, sand that down tomorrow and probably do another coat of filler before we start painting the side walls. Not too concerned about that at the moment. We'll probably just paint the side wall there up to the door and probably paint this sidewall over here up to the window. And uh, then I can get some other stuff located, like my bench over here, and I've got another pegboard to go up here. And I want to get this cabinet back up over there and probably the central vac up over there so I can get some of this stuff out, out of my way, basically, in, in this area here so I can make it a little bit more livable in the garage, at least half of the garage, and I can actually start filling up the cabinets eventually. We still need to put that shelf up, so that'll probably be the next thing I do before I continue on with painting. And uh, that's it for tonight, though. We'll see you back out here whenever. Back to a full week, work week tomorrow being Monday. So anyway, we'll be out here when we can. All right, another quick update for you. And sometimes I forget where I'm at because it's been so long between videos because <laughs> it takes me so long to do these little sections because I'm generally working like an hour or two at night when I get home from work. Anyway, this was uh, yesterday's progress, so I managed to, uh, I'm not sure whether I left off at finishing the painting, but I finished the painting on the wall. I put the uh, shelf up, and then I've relocated the uh, vacuum cleaner, the toolbox, and this chest where it needs to be, so that's looking pretty good. I still need to level everything out. I've got quite a slope from the back wall uh, towards the middle of the garage, so we're going to have to shim up the... Uh, the toolbox, for example, now the cabinets are good because they have adjustable legs on them or adjustable feet. So those are going to be okay, but the rolling chest and the toolbox are going to have to be shimmed back pretty substantially So because uh, the doors keep opening by themselves and I can't have that happening. Anyway, uh, so we're going to tackle a little bit of a different uh, project tonight. I'm going to actually go after, or start going after, going after the sidewalls. So I've got a little bit of sanding to do over here on this patch. And... Uh, then we're gonna start cleaning the walls up over here and we're gonna to try to get this wall painted up to about the window here with the uh, light gray so I can start moving things like the compressor back in the uh, area it needs to be as well as getting the work table set up where it needs to be. There's a piece of pegboard going uh, above that. I wanna get this hose reel mounted. I'm thinking the hose reel is gonna go back here maybe between the uh, cabinet and the compressor if I've got enough space, maybe down in this area right tight to the cabinet because uh, this cabinet, this uh, compressor is a little wider at the top because of the cage. So I think I might have enough room to uh, set it down here beside the tank at the bottom. Probably be a good spot for it. So we'll maybe work on getting that mounted too. Before we start loading the cabinets up, I wanna make sure that the cabinets don't need to be moved out or relocated or anything before I put stuff in them because obviously I'd have to empty everything out to be able to move them again. So the camp cabinets are still empty which makes uh, organizing the garage a little bit difficult because I can't put anything back in the cabinets yet, so I still have everything sort of laying around. It's getting better out here. I've got a little bit more room to move, but once we get the compressor located where it needs to be and that work table back against the wall where it needs to be, that should help me quite a bit.
Anyway, so I'm going to probably move the compressor out from the wall, start sanding and maybe start cleaning and maybe, maybe be able to get uh, the first coat of paint on this wall over here. That's the plan for tonight. It's about 8 p.m. So it's fairly late at night to be out here, but we got to get her done sometime. All right, happy Saturday. We made it through the week again, and uh, unfortunately didn't get a lot done out here during the week because it was pretty busy at work this week, but did manage to get this wall painted and a few things moved around. The compressor just kind of sat back in the corner where it needs to be in our workbench, back in the area where it needs to be. Uh, we are gonna be doing some work back over in this area. We're gonna try to install a TV, flat screen TV, and a piece of pegboard here behind our workbench. That'll be for a project a little later today, hopefully. But today we're gonna to concentrate on this wall over here. So we still need to uh, sand down our patch over there and we need to get that wall painted in order to put our shelf back up. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna invest in another uh, cabinet, a uh, little slightly, slightly different, same series, diamond series cabinet, but a little cabinet that lifts up versus lifting out because the central vac is gonna be in the way to be able to get the doors open. So I think if I go to a different format or style of cabinet, I may be able to uh, to utilize that versus this old wooden kitchen cabinet that I repurposed. So first things first, we'll get that area sanded down, make a mess over there, and then of course clean that wall down and get that painted up to at least the uh, edge of the door frame. I'll have to paint the door at some point as well and get rid of all the uh, practice painting from when we paint cars. Too lazy to put paper up, but we will do that in the future now that we're gonna have it looking better. So uh, let's get crack a lacking and uh, get sanding on that wall. All right, quick update for you. Still a mess, but uh, less of a mess, let's say. Uh, starting to clear stuff out, clearing bins out, emptying those out, and getting some for relocation to other areas. Um, but making progress. So we did get the pegboard up on this wall. We've got the bench pushed back in place. We did get our TV mounted up there and our clock repositioned. New battery in the clock. That had been dead for a few months. Anyway, uh, we've got our Alexa set up out here and then we've got our pegboard starting to happen over here. We've got our bench, our uh, workbench, rolling tool chest leveled. Uh, we just put some wooden blocks and we started let's move this for a second we started moving some stuff into cabinets so we've got this cabinet pretty much ready to go as far as uh stuff for working on the car as far as chemicals are concerned brake cleaners brake fluid um, throttle body cleaners fluid film wd-40 etc so this is pretty much all of the stuff to work on my cars and uh, got a few fastener boxes down there that we'll probably end up moving over to this cabinet over here. And we'll just keep this one actually for fluids and chemicals. So uh, anyway, that's looking better. And uh, we're gonna start to work on this side of the garage a little bit more and start filling this cabinet up with some tools. Oh, I did actually move some stuff up into these cabinets as well. I decided these cabinets were gonna be for my power tool are my battery operated tools they're easy to grab right here so we'll do that and uh, in this one I've got more tools over here more battery power tools but stuff I use less often let's say so plus we've got our spare batteries up there and I set up a battery station over here that we've got working on a power bar which I'll just flip on here I can flip, flip this on and off as required. I don't like having my batteries charging all the time, so it's nice to have it on a power bar where I can just sort of flip it on and flip it off when I leave the garage. So, uh, got a few uh, signs up here, back on the wall. So things are coming together, slowly but surely, and uh, are looking better day by day. All right, let's get to work and uh, move a few th more things around. I'd really like to, uh, maybe today, we'll see, but I'd kind of like to get this cabinet off the wall and I'd like to get that cabinet put over there. And uh, that means I need to reposition a bunch of stuff and move a shelf out of the way. So, but maybe we'll uh, spend some time getting that organized today as we'll move some of this stuff that's on the floor. For example, I've got a bunch of socket sets and impact sets down there on the floor. Those will probably go on the bottom of this cabinet over here. 
And then I've got this big bin of corded tools that will have to go somewhere. So we'll figure out a, way, a spot for that. I think a lot of the tools will probably go in a combination in this cabinet and probably in the bottom drawers here. So we'll see what we're gonna do as far as that's concerned, as far as organization is concerned. But uh, like I said, we're making progress. All right, bring back a little later on for an update. All right, another quick update for you. It's starting to thin out a little bit in here, but there's things we need to move out of the garage like this old bookshelf and this old shelf unit. All this stuff over here, all the old light fixtures and the door for this cabinet. As we have the new cabinet in place with the shelf above it, and of course the wall's been painted in that area as well. So I'm making progress again, but uh, we do need to start clearing some stuff out in order to make some space in here. So that's gotta go away. That little shelf's gotta go away, and that big shelf there, metal shelf. It's probably gonna go downstairs, and then we've gotta find homes for all these items, my workshop manuals will probably go up in one of these cabinets here, maybe at the very top. I don't use them very often. They're just reference materials. And uh, some of the other stuff's just gonna go in the dump. But we'll uh, see, we gotta sort that pile out over there. Under the tarps are my two welders, so they are planned to go along this wall after we get this painted. So pretty sure we'll have enough room there. I've got a spare engine for a TR3 up there. Some parts from a TR4 in the blue bin, and then the engine hoist with my TR3 doors. Anyway, we'll remove this uh, remaining light fixtures here. There's a couple light fixtures that are gonna go in the garbage. And we remove this poster, our spare metal. We'll go behind the poster eventually after that wall is painted. And then we've got to uh, start cleaning up here on top of the cabinets to be able to get that wall painted up there. That's a pretty messy job up there. The tops of those cabinets are extremely dirty. And the walls are gonna take some cleaning for sure. Maybe we'll blow that off with a leaf blower first before we attack it with a spray bottle with some cleaner and uh, we'll go to town. So anyway, making our way down this side. Still got a lot of work to do on this side of the garage as far as painting is concerned. So we'll get there when we get there, but uh, we're kind of making our way down the, this side of the garage at the moment. All right, it's probably been a couple of days since I've taken any video out here. <laughs> and every time I come out in the garage, I don't think it looks any better than what it did before. I still got a pile of stuff over here to go through, but trust me, things have been put away and put in their place. I've made a couple of trips to the dump into the hazardous waste facility to get rid of some scrap metal, some old batteries, some oil, etc., fluorescent tubes. For example, of those all those old fluorescent lights have been pulled down off the wall over there. I'm just getting this wall ready to paint so you know the car has been moved off of jack stands and put on rolling jacks to be able to pull it away from the wall so we can get over there and start scrubbing that old dirty wall down before we get another uh, coat of that uh, light gray paint on it so we are making headway but uh, like i said it doesn't really look like it from day to day this stuff just kind of gets moved around moved to the right moved to the left <laughs> but Trust me, there is some progress being made. I have bought a few bins, for example, and have filled uh, a couple of the bins up there, for example, with some tools that I rarely use. So I put them up there, some of the cord corded tools that I have. And there's a couple of empty bins up here as well that I need to fill with some bits and bobs. So I am going through and uh, getting rid of stuff as I can and moving stuff into uh, my storage at the back, into the uh, storage shed that I have. Like the engine stand, for example, was underneath the car. Well, now that I've moved the car over and I put it off of jack stands, now I need to find a home for that. So anyway, we are getting there. I did actually get another couple pieces for the garage. I actually had purchased them a while ago, but they were uh, going to be in the way. So I uh, purchased this uh, press, for example, and uh, picked it up yesterday. And you know, this air mover down here I picked up yesterday, this little welding table I would bought a little while ago, but... It's made its way into the garage, so I'll need to find homes in the garage for these items as well. So that's what we're planning on doing today with this uh, wall over here. Um, like I said, it's extremely dirty, and every wall in here has been really, really dirty, like absolutely filthy. And you can see that the paint on the wall is not adhering very well to the uh, drywall underneath. And I don't think it was really painted that well 
when it was done probably, I don't know, 25 years ago. So anyway, it's been a bit of a challenge to deal with this paint. I obviously do not, do not want to sand these walls down entirely. So I've just been scraping the loose paint off, but I'll get more flaking off as I roll it. But again, it's a garage, so I'm not worried about it too much. Um, this wall will pretty much be filled up with equipment anyway, with my welders, for example, with my spare sheet metal for repairs and a bunch of other stuff. I've got a spare engine here, which will go towards the garage door, for example. So I'm, I'm going to be filling this area up here anyway with equipment after it's painted. And uh, then I have to also worry about this area up here above the cabinets, which is, again, extremely dirty. You can see all of the cobwebs and dirt up here in the corner, for example, that all has to be cleaned out. So we'll have to get up there on the uh, ladder and do that. I'm not looking forward to doing that area up there. Um, I'm sure the tops of the cabinets are completely dirty as well. So that'll have to be taken care of. And then I think I have a plan to paint these cupboards, uh, probably that dark gray, the same gray, dark gray as the back wall. I think I have enough paint to do these. So at some point, these cabinets will have to be scrubbed down and you can see how dirty these are as well. So these will be have to uh, at least scuff sanded down, handles removed for these to be painted. So, but I think that'll make a bit of a difference um, to the whole makeover eventually. So yeah, we're just kind of weaving our way through with the little space that we have in the garage at the moment. And uh, anyway, we're starting to kind of put stuff up where we can on the walls as we come across it. I did end up getting another uh, pegboard kit over here today from Amazon. So we can get that board over there looking a little bit more organized like this board here. So still trying to organize, organize these upper cabinets a little bit. We do have that cabinet uh, over there filled. This cabinet pretty much has a little bit of space left, but uh, these cabinets are pretty much filled already. Maybe a few more things can go here and there. But those cabinets are pretty much situated and filled with uh, with the contents that uh, need to be in there. So, all right. Anyway, I guess I'm going to stop talking here. We're going to break out the uh, the cleaning solution and go after uh, cleaning down this bottom wall. And then eventually we'll have to make it up top and do that top piece. So uh, we'll do the easy stuff first and then we'll migrate northwards. All right. That's it for now. All right, that's the job I wasn't looking forward to doing, but it's done now. So just past 8 p.m. on Friday night going into the weekend. So I'm happy about that. That'll give us an opportunity now to uh, clean the cupboards down and get those painted probably tomorrow morning. And then we can start uh, moving some stuff back against that wall underneath the cabinetry to clear this side of the garage out of a few pieces of equipment that are in the way and will be in the way when we get to this wall, finishing off this part of the wall which will hopefully be maybe Sunday, which would be great if I could get that done. And that would just leave me this end wall garage doors and the framing of the garage doors need to be done. I'm not sure what color that's going to be done in yet, but uh, I'm running a little bit short on paint, on the light gray paint. I think I have enough dark gray to do the uh, cabinets, but uh, the light gray I may have to break down and buy another gallon, but we'll wait and see. So I think that's it for tonight. We'll go in and relax a little bit. Start the weekend off, and uh, we'll get back out here bright and early tomorrow. All right. All right, guys. Welcome back. Saturday morning, and uh, just back out in the garage to do a bit more painting. So uh, last night, managed to get those walls painted over there, and that's looking much better. So today, we're going to go after painting the cabinets this dark gray color that I've got on the back wall. So the first thing I need to do is to uh, clean those cabinets up. Uh, they're pretty dirty and sandy and grimy, so uh, they're going to get a good wash and a little bit of a scuff sand before we go ahead and uh, get the paintbrush and the roller out and uh, go to town. So we'll make those look a little bit better. So that's the task for this morning, and then we'll move some stuff back against that wall from over on this side of the garage and uh, get it situated where it needs to be. All right, that's the plan. All right, another job done. Uh, cabinets are now painted gray, including the uh, one up the top here that I forgot about. Uh, we actually have some new handles to install as well. Uh, some stainless steel handles I just made a quick run to the Home Depot and I figured I'd get rid of the old wooden ones that were on there and go with some updated stainless steel to match the rest of the, or try and match a little bit better the rest of the look. So those look much better than they did. So uh, we'll let that dry. And like I said, we'll start moving stuff back in under that shelf. I do have a banner to put up under there. I think I have another banner that's cleaner just to protect that wall a little bit because the 
Uh, steel, for example, is gonna go up there. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drape the banner or I'm gonna fasten the banner at the top and then tuck the steel in behind it just to make it look a little bit better. And uh, then we'll place all the rest of the stuff that I can, anything that I can fit along that wall to uh, pack that up is gonna go there. So, all right, let's move on, let this dry and continue. All right, we've got this area kind of looking the way we want to. You can see we've got the new cabinet hardware on, so the new stainless steel handles, they look good. So we've got the Kendall banner up, and we're just gonna use that as a drape basically to hide my sheet metal that I use for repairing my car projects. So we'll tuck that in behind it. We just got that screwed along the top. It will unfurl a little bit. It was sitting outside of my shed outside in the cold. So uh, it needs to unfurl a little bit in the corners, and maybe I'll just tack it down with a couple of tacks. But uh, yeah, I think we're ready to start moving stuff up against that wall. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Things are looking better. Maybe I'll put a sign or something up on the top there before it gets too tight for me to get a ladder in just to take up a little bit of that white or that gray wall space up there. Let's see what we can do. All right, another long day out in the garage, 8.30 p.m. and we're just about to head in. It's looking better. Um, got a little bit more organized over on this side. Most of the cabinets are organized now. Toolboxes still have to be gone through, but uh, we're getting there. Some stuff needs to be put away in the basement, like I've got some empty bins now, so those can get out of here. And I've got a couple of garbage bags going, those can get out of here. Uh, the welder, this welder is actually going to be for sale. I have uh, another welder over there, so I don't need two. So the Lincoln 140 will be for sale. I've got a Lincoln 180 over there, plus the TIG welder. So this one can go for sale and uh, free up some space in the garage. So we'll get that listed. Probably tomorrow we'll get it cleaned up a little bit and listed for sale. And other than that, you know, it's just uh, finding homes for the rest of this stuff. There's some parts here. That's a cylinder head off a TR250 that's got to find a home. I did uh, decrease the size of my metal scrap bin. I went to the dump again today with another metal, uh, metal drop-off. Um, that's the uh, trunk panel for my TR4, which needs to go in the car at some point. So... Anyway, and then we've got to sort out all the stuff I've sort of been piling in the car. But uh, there's not too much stuff in there that's not car related, so that's a good thing. So anyway, I think we're going to call it a night out here, um, temporarily at least. And uh, we'll get back out here tomorrow and spend another full day out here tomorrow. And like I said, maybe tomorrow I can get the rest of this uh, area painted. That's not too bad. Um, so I believe I have enough paint to do this area. Looking a little crusty down there, but I, like I said, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Maybe I'll do a little bit of patching, but other than that, yeah, we're getting pretty close to getting it finished painted anyway, and I'll be looking forward to the end of that. I hate painting, so. All right, that's it for tonight. We'll uh, see you back out here tomorrow morning, and uh, we'll spend another day out in the garage getting a little bit closer. All right, guys, it's another day out here, and we are beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel, I think. As you can see, I've got all of the uh, posters that were on this wall off the wall. We've given it an initial cleaning with just a brush, and now we're just about to hit it with some TSP and wash that down for a second time. Then we'll hit it with some uh, clean soap and water before we get to the painting stage. But it is looking better. Uh, this side of the garage is actually looking better as well. We did get the car cleaned out and the cover put back on and pushed over to the right side of the garage. We have a few bits left out here that we've got to find homes for. I think the painting stuff will go back downstairs. Uh, eventually, when we're done, scrap metal bin, we'll have to find a home for. Of course, the shop vac is always difficult to find a home to, uh, to store that. You kind of want it out in the garage, but you kind of don't. They're hard to store. They seem to have a whole bunch of lids with no uh, corresponding bins. It's kind of like socks in the laundry, I guess. Anyway, uh, other than that, it's looking pretty good. Uh, so let's get to finishing off the painting. We will attack the garage doors probably at a different time. I'm really just concentrating, wanting to get this wall done. At some point, we'll have to come back and do the end walls and the garage doors, but that'll be for another day. So let's get crack a lacking and uh, finish off this painting. All right, had to get a little bit creative over on that wall. We're running out of paint. So that little area in the center under the windows just became a little highlight area. <laughs> So we ended up using all of our light gray and all of our dark gray paint. Again, it's a little bit sparse on the wall as far as the light gray paint. I'd like to have had a little bit more, but it was pretty rough painting over some of those areas that were really bad, particularly down the bottom there. You can see the, the paper peeling right off the drywall. 
anyway, it's done. So I do have a plan to do something a little bit different up in this area. I mentioned it a long time ago when I first started this video, probably about, I don't know, four weeks ago now. So we're gonna to attempt to do what I wanna do. Again, it's another pack rat solution. I've had these uh, items kicking around for quite some time, I think since about 2012 off the top of my head. Anyway, we'll see if we can uh, make them work out here in the garage. That was the intention of when I grabbed them. So we'll see if we can put them to use and get them out of the basement. All right, guys, we're down in the dark garage and we're having a look at these uh, panels that I uh, rescued from the 2012 Canadian International Auto Show where the Toronto Triumph Club had a uh, amazing display of triumphs on display during uh, the two-week show. So I managed to grab six of these panels. I've dragged five of them up to the garage already and I also have these little trim pieces here that I intend on using to trim out the windows. So these were, uh, I think, located around the bases of the displays, the sort of the uh, pedestals that the cars were on. These were sort of lining the bases of the pedestal. So I grabbed some of those as well. So I've had these panels sitting back here for quite some time, along with some other bits. There's a, an original windscreen, a triplex windscreen for a TR8 that I plan on getting to at some point. But uh, these have been sort of languishing down here since 2012. So we'll drag them out, up out of the basement and put them to good use on the left-hand side wall. All right, guys, it's coming up to uh, eight o'clock and we've got the first three panels up and I'm trying to decide if I want to stop there or if I want to continue. I do have two more panels, but obviously I'd have to shorten them so I'm thinking of doing maybe one more panel, full panel here at this size, and then we'll just bring it over here and end it next to my bench, basically, butt up against my pegboard frame. So that's what I'm trying to decide if I want to do that or not, or whether I just want to stick up. I've got a couple of banners. I've got a TR6 banner and a green TR3 banner. Actually, I've got a moss banner that could go there as well. So I may just go ahead and do that and uh, use that space as opposed to doing the panel boards. I may uh, cut them anyway. Uh, I might decide to put them up later and I may as well do it while I've got them handy. I can't imagine that I'd require a use for them elsewhere. So anyway, I think we're gonna call it a night out here. I've gotta go in and have some dinner, it's getting late. So I've had a pretty good uh, evening out in the garage, I'd say, and I think I'm happy with that. I'm glad I saved those for those 12 years. <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted to do with them. So. It worked out. I actually have another little trick up my sleeve. Again, some more stuff I saved from the auto show. And you can see how funky the uh, trim is around the windows. This was never trimmed very well. So I actually have some trim pieces that actually came from the show as well. They're sort of narrow strips actually that have a sort of a laurel design. So I might bring those up and then frame the uh, window as well, which will go with the same sort of motif from the show. So, that's it for now. We'll see you out here tomorrow and uh, we'll continue on. All right, guys, it's the next morning and I've got a few uh, minutes before I've got to go to work. So I figured I'd come out and start finishing off these other two boards that I left last night. So there's what those look like. And again, I wasn't too sure whether I was going to like them or not, but I think they look okay there. And as you can see, I started trimming out the windows and all I'm using is, again, I picked up some of this trim from the show uh, in these, I don't know how long they are, but uh, anyway, we're just going to trim around the windows. I think it looks a lot better than how it was trimmed by the builder way back when. So, I mean, I could have mitered the corners, but again, it's a garage. So whatever I do, I think there is going to look better than what's there today. So we're just going to finish up this window frame and then we're going to call this area good. So got a few minutes to do that. So let's get cracking. All right, can't remember where I left off. I think I was trimming the windows and those are now done. So I like it, looks better than uh, what it did. So we put that material to good use and I like the paneling, how that turned out. So I think uh, we're getting down to the end here. Again, still need to paint the garage doors, but that might be a weekend project. Um, I got these things left to get out of the garage and uh, not much over there, just a garbage bag. It's got to go out in the garbage on Friday this week. 
Um, I think what we're gonna do now is we're going to concentrate on some lighting. We're probably gonna take down these old fluorescent tubes. Maybe leave the center one. I like that one with the pull string on it. I can sort of light that up independently. Maybe try to move this one up higher and then we'll get rid of that uh, dull one over there. And what I've got are some LED tubes here. Uh, there's, I believe, eight of them. These are the same style as these ones up here. So the plan is to put a bank of four of them on this side of the bulkhead at the top, all the way across, and then on the inside, which will light up the back part of this bulkhead a little bit better. So that's the plan. So what we'll do is we've got the uh, car on rollers. I think we'll just spin it around and park it sideways in the garage. And uh, then we can sort of have better access to get the ladders up and around to get the lights off the ceiling and installed. So that's the plan for the next hour or so. All right, guys, just coming up to 9.30 p.m. And uh, had another few uh, good hours out in the garage here. And I uh, can't remember where I left off, but obviously that's all trimmed out. I think I left off at putting the lights up. And the lights are up. Uh, I did move a few signs around as well. So uh, I've got those up and uh, they're looking good. I moved that, this sign up here from over there because it's generally probably gonna be blocked because I'm gonna have, probably have stuff stored up on top of the cabinet. So I figured I'd put it up here where it's not gonna be uh, blocked by something put in front of it. So anyway, uh, the lights definitely uh, are much better. I took these two lights down if you didn't notice that. So the old fluorescent lights are gone. We've got a strip of lights in the front of the bulkhead. And as mentioned, we've got a strip of lights in the back of the bulkhead. If you wanna see what kind of difference that makes, let me go over here. And the one reason I wanted to put these in is I've never actually had, so I've got a side door over here, but if, I don't actually have a light switch over here. So if I'm coming into the garage at night, for example, when it's dark, my switch is all the way over there on that wall. So that's rather inconvenient. So what I've done is I've actually wired in the switch here to activate these lights independently. So if I just flip this switch, there you go. So if you can tell the difference between uh, having those lights on and off. So here we go. So quite a big difference as far as brightness is concerned, as you can see. So I'm happy with that and I'm happy I've got them working off the switch there at the door. So yeah, like I said, another good day out here. Still some stuff to put away, and uh, but we're getting closer. I keep saying that, I know, but I think uh, the next task will probably be to start thinking about buying some paint to paint the garage doors and this end wall. And uh, we'll get that done and call this project finally done. Then we can get back to working on cars. So anyway, it's looking good. We'll uh, come back tomorrow for another update. Well, unfortunately, I think the uh, interior painting of the uh, garage doors is going to have to wait a few days as it's just too cold out to uh, actually apply paint to the garage doors. They're not insulated, so you can imagine how cold this wood is. So we'll have to hold off on doing that and we'll just do some uh, organization in the garage in the meantime. So unfortunately, this project will have to wait for probably at least a week to two weeks before I can get the uh, garage door painted, garage doors painted. Anyway, there's the update on the garage doors. So let's play around with doing some organization of the actual toolboxes themselves. I'm gonna to try to level out that box a little bit better. I've just got a piece of wood under there propping it up. I've got to do something a little bit more permanent. I've already got a couple blocks under my uh, rolling chest to level it, but the uh, toolbox itself needs to be leveled a little bit better. So we'll work on doing that today while we can. Well, I didn't do what I said I was going to do, so we'll have to come back and do that later. I did get the toolbox leveled a bit better, but then we jumped onto something different. I uh, decided to fix up that cable for my cable television and my internet. It was kind of just dangling there awkwardly, so I got up there and stapled that to the wall, and then we added a couple signs there in the corner. Now, that sounds easy enough, but that meant I had to move both the uh, workbench and the compressor out of the way. So. It takes a little while to get things done. So anyway, we've got that corner looking a little bit better and the cables managed a bit better. So we're happy there in that corner. Then I decided I was gonna do one more little piece over there. So on top of that bin, we've got a little uh, 
laser cut Triumph Shield, our book logo, they call it. So that's good. I think I've got one more thing to put up over there. I have to wait to get the car moved. I think we'll maybe try to clean this Triumph TR3 sign up a little bit and stick it up over, over the railing over there. So yeah, it's still coming together, uh, still putting the parts and pieces in order, um, but it's looking better. So again, probably a uh, break for dinner, then we'll come out and we'll play around with the toolboxes and clear off the benches a little bit better. I do have a plan, I don't know if I mentioned it to you or not, to actually refinish the top of this bench. It's looking pretty worse for wear. So I think this is gonna get a sand down um, or a grind down and then a coating with some um, pour 15, that's the plan. But that'll be a, another future project. We're not too worried about it at the moment, but that is the plan for the future. So, time for dinner. We'll come out and play a little bit later on. All right, today is uh, organization day as far as the toolboxes are concerned. Since I've got uh, quite a few of my tools up on the pegboard now, uh, I've got some space available in my toolboxes, which is a good thing. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit of reorg as far as uh, moving stuff around in the drawers. For example, I've got a socket set over here that I think I'm going to put over here along with all my extensions, etc. And we're going to move my wrenches down into the drawers below since I have a lot of my wrenches now up on the pegboards available. So yeah, you're going to have to think about this a little bit as we go. And we'll do a little bit of cleaning and organizing and uh, I'll give you a shot at the end of the day. All right, guys, we're finally going to put an end to this video. I think we started uh, filming this uh, garage renovation project on February the 19th, and today is March the 21st. I'd mentioned that I thought it would probably take three to four weeks, and I wasn't too far off of that. So I guess today is the reveal day with the understanding that we still have some work to do on the garage doors on this end wall. And like I said, it's a little bit too cold to be doing that. Uh, so that will happen at a later point in time. And there's a few other projects that will happen at a later point in time. But I don't want to hold you anymore here. And I uh, figured I would show you the reveal as it is today. So definitely looks a lot different than what I started with. Hopefully I captured some good video at the beginning of this video so you could see what I was working with. There are still items in the garage that are going to be finding other homes. Uh, for example, the larger ladder goes back in the basement, so I've still got it out in the garage here, but that will uh, go back in the basement and declutter this area a bit more. And uh, a few other items that will probably find new homes in the future, like the engine hoist, for example. I've kept it out for now because I need to work on my TR3 and lift the body at some point in the near future, so that's here currently, but that will go back to an outdoor, not an outdoor, but... I've got a shed that will store that and get that out of this area as well. So there's going to be a little less stuff in the garage eventually. Once uh, we get finished with the equipment, we'll move it out of the way and put it away temporarily at least. So without further ado, let me take you through the garage as a whole. Maybe we'll open some cabinets so you can see what I've done as far as the cabinet organization is concerned. And uh, we'll have a little chat along the way. All right, we'll start with the uh, left-hand side of the garage, and uh, I'm quite happy with the way that this wall turned out with the uh, the boards that I've kept from the uh, Canadian International Auto Show. I think that turned out pretty well. I'm happy I've stored them for all that long period of time. So they look good. Um, they're easy to clean down, so they get dusty or dirty. I can just wipe them down with a little bit of soap and water. We've got our jack stands down here, our, pr our pressure washer, and just our battery booster our press here which is a new addition to the garage which i've kind of always wanted so obviously we've got a workbench on this side of the garage now versus uh obviously didn't have anything there before if you remember back in the original uh, videos i shot there was the mezzanine back in this area here and just as a reference to take you backwards a little bit so if you can't envision where the mezzanine used to be i can tell you right here is a hole in the floor where there was a peg holding the outside leg of the mezzanine. So the mezzanine basically came out from this hole in the garage all the way across. So that's basically how much space I was losing having the mezzanine in the garage where I couldn't really get anything under it and I couldn't work under it obviously. So 
that gained me quite a bit of space here at the front of the garage. So that's what I really wanted to do by removing that mezzanine and getting rid of all of that useless stuff that was basically stored up on top of the mezzanine. I found a different home for those uh, boxes that were up there and discarded a lot of stuff. I've made a few runs to the dump, as I've mentioned. I still have quite a bit of garbage to get rid of. Tomorrow is garbage day, but unfortunately I won't be able to get rid of all of it. But anyway, uh, back to the left-hand side of the garage here with this uh, workbench that was actually over in this area before. We've now got some pegboard above it, some lighting as well. And uh, we've got a little bit of storage underneath. The drill press is a new addition. Um, I've got an, uh, my electrical box under there and some spare tools under there. Eventually, uh, obviously the compressor or the larger compressor is, is a new addition, so a 60 gallon uh, compressor and it's not hooked up yet. The power for it is right here. The 240 is actually right here beside it. So that's a good thing, nice and close there, but we'll have to get the hoses and the filter hooked up for it at some point eventually. Uh, we've got the TV over here now, and that works pretty well. Um, and it's actually on a movable stand, so I can pretty much pull that out from the wall and direct it at any angle that I want to. So I'm quite happy with how that turned out. We've got the Vivor shelves above uh, the cabinets on the walls, and I split those in uh, into three-foot sections. They're originally six-foot sections that were joined. I've split them and put them in pairs here on the back wall. And we've got another one over there. I still have another shelf to mount if I want. I was thinking of putting the one up there above the tracks, but uh, we'll see. I don't think I'm going to need it. There's actually very little in the bins that are up there now. Um, and the plan is really to not have a lot of bin storage out here, just basically keep out here what I'm working on. That's the plan anyway. We'll see how that goes. All right, so I thought I'd uh, walk you through maybe some of the uh, cabinetry so you can see what I've done as far as the storage in the cabinets. So the first cabinet, uh, I've pretty much got all, mostly all of my chemicals in here, so all my brake cleaners, my glues, there's my, my mini bar there as well. But basically all chemicals and oil and obviously car related stuff. There are a few uh, little boxes of some electrical connectors and that kind of stuff down there tucked away in bins. But for the most part, it's uh, all basically oils, uh, carb cleaners, throttle body cleaners, my silicone, WD-40, that kind of stuff. So anything as far as... Uh, what I require to work on cars is pretty much here in this general area. So that's the first cabinet. Some of this is going to be leaving soon. I've got a Triumph TR4 engine um, being built at the moment, and that is the brake and oil for it. So that'll obviously leave the cabinet and give me a bit more space. So that is that cabinet. Um, these cabinets up above, um, again, not wasn't really too sure what to do with these, but... Uh, We've got some just general storage up here. Uh, put my tapes up there. Some basically some stuff that I'll use very infrequently. Uh, maintenance kit for the compressor up there. Uh, some old uh, battery powered tool bags that I generally don't tend to use. Other thing like some electrical uh, connections for the lights. Some Velcro, heavy duty Velcro. Uh, some parts bins, some concrete anchors, uh, fasteners, etc. Some electronics in there as well. My levels are there, some flashlights, my markers, basically stuff that I use pretty regularly on the bottom here, on the bottom shelf. And of course I've got up here stuff I use a little bit less frequently on the top, so all the shop manuals are up there. And again, a bunch of more different kits, uh, uh, fuel, fuel line clips or clamps, whatever you wanna call them, spring assortments. I've got my uh, vernier gauges there and some Dremel stuff over here. And again, my scale for when I'm measuring paint, etc. So that's what we've got in that cabin. Up there are all the, basically the manuals for anything that I purchased as far as equipment is concerned. So we keep those just in case we need to have some reference. Again, the pegboard back here with um, most of the tools that I'll be using uh, easily at hand. So lots of wrenches uh, and obviously screwdrivers are really <laughs> what I use probably the most here. I quite like these Castleman um, magnetic shelves. Not quite sure what we're doing with them at the moment, but these were fairly cheap. I think they were 40 bucks Canadian off of Amazon. And um, 
they're quite nice actually. I really like how the way they work. They're much, much cheaper than uh, the Craftsman style. I think the Craftsman style, this one item alone was I think close to 50 or $60 for the Craftsman version of this. So we've got a rolling toolbox here in the middle uh, with a power bar at the back. We've got our Alexa out here as well to keep us company. And I did do some organization on the uh, on the toolbox as well. As mentioned, I've kind of moved all my tools from this box to this being my primary box now with this kind of an overflow box over there. So everything that I really use frequently here is at hand. And the way I've structured the box is uh, anything that I use frequently obviously is higher up in the box. And as lower you go down, the less frequent use of items will get. So heading towards the right side of the garage, we've got a bit more storage up there on top. My grease guns and grease up there. Uh, some buffing stuff for my cars. Got an empty bin up there. We're not sure what we put in that yet, but it's always good to have empty bins just in case. We've got our fastener bins up here stored on top of the cabinet, our garbage bags and gloves, as well as our um, leaf bags up here as well. In this cabinet, I pretty much have tools. So grinders etc. All my air tools are here. The ones that I use anyway are here. Here's another sort of electrical box over here. My buffer and all of my kits basically are down below. So any of my tool kits, I've got multiple socket sets, um, bearing drivers. Uh, that's a skill saw down there. Um, uh, testers, example for example, are here. Hammer and dolly sets. Anything that I have basically in a plastic box is basically in here tool wise anyway and again all my sanders all my die grinders are all here my welding stuff is here so everything is pretty easily accessible here what i primarily use out of this cabinet anywhere are this this stuff up here which are my angle grinders and my dremel and uh, my little finger sander and of course my grinding shield is here as well again a bunch more different hardware screws clips, etc. just random stuff, some drill bits uh, here as well. A ton of spark plugs that I've saved from various projects. I should probably go through those and get rid of them, but I, I tend to keep stuff that I probably shouldn't. Uh, in this box here, and we gave this a pretty good cleanup. I wish you had seen this before I actually started the project, but it was pretty heavily coated with overspray. You can probably see on the top, I haven't really clean that you can probably see how dull that is well the front of the box pretty much looked like that as well so again we've just sort of uh, organized this box uh, again you know items that I'll use less frequently than what I've got up on the pegboards but uh, you know, we've got assortment of vice grips basically over there already which will be my primaries but and then we've got some backups over here so of course we've got the mini bar fridge on this side, we've got our battery uh, setup. So we've got a power bar here that we can just flip on and off when we want to charge our batteries. So if we just give this a, a quick flip, you can see we got our batteries charging away. We've got our extra battery storage up here. Our impact wrenches, the ones that we use most frequently are here. Our battery charger back there. Got a little bit of storage down here uh, for some paint and some cleaners. Up here, we basically have more power tools battery power tools that I use fairly frequently. So some impact wrenches are uh, battery power grinder, some more impact and drills. Uh, I've got a cordless ratchet up there, a couple cordless ratchets and some other battery power tools. So those are easily uh, at hand as well. So up on top, we've got uh, basically our, um, that's a uh, gas torch. And uh, that's our brake bleeding stuff up there. Some bucks for making our vents on our TR250. Up there is just some more general storage. There's just some junk in there. We put another Vivor shelf up over here uh, with some parts and just a blower fan. So when I'm painting in the garage, we can stick the uh, air mover under the uh, front edge of the garage and blow any uh, fumes. We've got our rhino, rhino ramps here as well. This is primarily my painting cabinet, so... Mostly everything used in here is basically for painting or bodywork. So all of my paints, all of my sandpapers and blocks, for example, are here. All of my grinding discs, for example, are here. My uh, safety stuff, my masks, etc., my safety glasses are all in here as well. So that's pretty much that cabinet there. Along this side, 
again, I've already showed you, I think, the welders. So we've got our MIG welder here, our TIG welder there, our plasma cutter below that. The engine hoist I mentioned is probably going to be leaving. Got a little welding, portable welding table here. We've got a spare engine block there that will probably find a home at some point. We go through these cabinets here. Again, sort of overflow from this cabinet. We've got all our spray paints over here. And then basically we get into our car cleaning products, which are basically over here. So this is the car cleaning cabinet. So all our waxes, polishes, car cleaning stuff in here. And then and just another, just sort of a general overflow cabinet over there. And again, it's some more bins of just general hardware over there. So that's pretty much the layout of the garage. Here's what I intend to do as far as what I'm working on in the garage is just going to be, you know, current projects. So this is a TR4 stuff that I'm working on, a Triumph TR62, Triumph TR4 engine build. So these parts need to be painted. So we'll be doing that soon now that we've finished our garage project. Jack stands over here on the wall. I'll probably end up moving those down a little bit further towards the garage. We've got enough car uh, room to get the car in here, no problem. The only issue is that when I open the door on the driver's side, I want to make sure, obviously, I've got a clear area there. So it's not a great spot for the jack stands, or at least the probably the first four can go basically down here where there will be nothing. So a little carpet here, it makes it a little bit more comfortable to uh, lay under the car in the uh, middle of winter if I'm working on a car. And uh, we still need to find a better spot for our scrap metal bin. But uh, we did significantly downsize. That was good. And we've got our basically our jacks over here. A few more jack stands over there. A few more parts over there. I did start to just, uh, I, well, I finished off the paint that I had as far as uh, painting panels on the garage. So that's what it'll look like. We'll probably give that a second coat at some point. But I, I will need to buy some more paint to be able to do that. But uh, it's going to look good when those garage doors are painted. So... That's pretty much about it. I did put the TR3 banner up over there. It's seen better days, but uh, it's part of the history of this garage. So anyway, we've got the TR6 banner up there, the sports car sales and service center banner here. A couple more posters I put up over there, a Castrol poster and a Moss poster. Uh, my TR250 uh, framed artwork here as well, which uh, was an original dealer uh, poster. So it's kind of cool. I've got that out in the garage. Just to give it a little bit of uh, pop of color out here. So anyway, I think that is it. Hopefully you'll uh, like the uh, results as much as I do. I'm quite pleased and I'm uh, eager to actually get a car in here to work on it. Like I said, I've got a significant amount more uh, room at the front of the garage to be able to wander around the car. So uh, I am really looking forward to getting a car in here to work on soon. And now that the garage is done and we've spent that last basically month, a little bit more than a month working on the garage, I'm now eager to get uh, a project, get back a, a project in here to work on. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting and thanks for subscribing. We'll get back to our regular content as mentioned. But for now, I'll just be happy to hang out in the garage, maybe watch a little TV, listen to some tunes and uh, maybe do a little painting. All right, that's it. Thanks very much. We'll talk to you later.